133, from chapter 2, verse 139. The personal soul, continuity, the skandhas, causation, atoms, the supreme spirit, the ruler, the creator, they are discriminations in the mind only. 134. Mind is all. It is found everywhere and in every body. It is by the evil-minded that multiplicity is recognized. There are no recognizable marks where mind only is. 135 through 137 from chapter 3, verses 35, 36, and 37. The ego soul is not with the skandhas, nor are the skandhas in the ego soul. They are not as they are discriminated, nor are they otherwise. The reality of objects is seen being discriminated by the ignorant. If it were so as they are seen, all would be seeing the truth. As all things are unreal, there is neither defilement nor purity. Things are not as they are seen, nor are they otherwise. 138. The constructing of appearances created by delusion is the characteristic mark of dependence knowledge. The giving of names to these appearances, regarding them as real individual existences, is characteristic of the imagination. 139. When the constructing of appearances and names, which come from the union of conditions and realities, no more takes place, we have the characteristic mark of perfected knowledge. 140. The world is everywhere filled with Buddhas of maturity, Buddhas of transformation, beings, bodhisattvas, and Buddha lands. 141. The issuing Buddhas, Dharma Buddhas, Transformation Buddhas, and those that appear transformed, they all come from Amitabha's land of bliss. 142. What is uttered by Buddhas of transformation and what is uttered by Buddhas of maturity constitute the doctrine fully developed in the sutras, whose secret meaning you should know. 143. What is uttered by the bodhisattvas and what is uttered by the teachers, they are both what is uttered by the Buddhas of transformation and not by the Buddhas of maturity. 144. All these individual objects or dharmas have never been born, but they are not exactly non-existent either. They resemble the Gandharva's castle, a dream, and magical creations. 145. Mind is set in motion in various ways, and mind is liberated. Mind rises in no other way, and mind thus ceases. 146. The mind of all beings is that which perceives something like objective reality, and this mind is the product of imagination. In mind only there is no objective world. When one is released from discrimination, there is liberation. 147. Brought together by the evil habit of erroneous reasoning, discrimination asserts itself. Hence, the evolution of this fallacious world. 148. Relative knowledge, or vijnana, takes place where there is something resembling an external world. Transcendental knowledge, or jnana, belongs to the realm of suchness. When a turning back, or paravitti, takes place, there is a state of imagelessness, which is the realm of the wise. 149, from chapter 2, verse 161. There are the dhyana for the examination of meaning, the dhyana practiced by the ignorant, the dhyana with tathata for its object, and the pure dhyana of the tathagata. 150. By reason of false imagination, or parikalpita, all things existent are declared unborn. As people take refuge in relative knowledge, or paritantra, they get confused in their discriminations. 151. When relative knowledge is purified by keeping itself aloof from discrimination and detached from imagination, there is a turning back to the abode of suchness. 152. 
Do not discriminate discrimination. There is no truth in discrimination. This world of delusion is discriminated as to what is perceived and that which perceives, but in reality there is no such dualism in it. It is an error to recognize an external world. The conception of self-substance is due to imagination. Imagining by this imagination, self-substance is conceived to rise by the conditions of origination. An external world is recognized in distortion. There is, in fact, no such external world, but just the mind. 154. To those who see the world clearly and properly, the separation between that which perceives and that which is perceived ceases. There is no external world as is discriminated by the ignorant. 155. When the mind is agitated by habit energy or memory, there arises what appears to be an external world. When the dualistic imagination ceases, there grows transcendental knowledge, or jnana, the realm of suchness, the realm of the wise, which is free from appearances and beyond thought. 156.3.